This video is intended for viewers 13 and up, mature collectors only. Hey guys, this is Esquashin4 here, back again with a new video for you guys, and today it's a video that I think has needed to be done for years now, but I'm finally getting around to doing it because I finally have all my games kind of out of their spots, and I'm able to um, actually show them to you guys. So, I think the last time I made a video on my Dragon Ball games was like 2013, which was years ago, and now it's about... it's. Pretty much, I'm recording this in um, 2019, uh, December, so maybe by the time I put this up it'll be 2020, who knows, but like I said, it's been a long time. Um, and I know you guys are interested in many, many Dragon Ball games that there are out there. There's so, so many. Some super rare and some um, not so rare, but still worth looking at. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail of each game because it would take too long because I have a lot more games than I did in 2013. So I'm just going to tell you kind of like the title, um, what system uh, they were for, and maybe a quick little fact or two about it, but nothing too into depth because it would take forever if I were to do that. So um, yeah, I guess without further ado, let's get into this because I know you guys are excited about Dragon Ball games. This is my pretty much, for the most part, complete Dragon Ball game collection um, as of right now. I do have a couple that are still coming in in the mail that I recently bought, but they won't be um, here in this video, so I'll point those out once um, I get to them, but right now these are the ones I physically have with me at the moment. So, okay, the first one we're going to start with the Famicom, which is the Nintendo Entertainment System in uh, the US, that's what it's called, but in, in Japan it's called the Famicom. Alright guys, so the first game we have here is from 1986. Shenron no Nazo is actually the second Dragon Ball game ever released. It is a action-based game and uh, it's a pretty vintage uh, gem you can see in the back right here. The graphics um, are not the best but of course it's from 1986 so what do you expect from the Famicom? <laughs> but um, the first Dragon Ball game that ever came out was a cassette game that is really rare and is worth like probably around two hundred dollars or so. I don't have that one now in Super Rare, but here's Shenron no Nazo. Second game for the Famicom is Dragon Ball Daima Fukatsu, which was released in 1988, and this one's like an RPG uh, card-based game. So it follows, I believe, around the Piccolo Daima saga. And you can see right here in the back how it's like a card-based game. Next game is Dragon Ball 3 Goku Den, and this is, I forgot to mention that Shenron no Nazu is the first game from this RPG series, second one being Daimao Fukatsu, and here's the third one, Goku Den. And of course, keeps following Dragon Ball, and it is also a RPG card-based game, as you can see right here. It was released in 1989. I love the artwork to these games, they're so cool. Next game is Dragon Ball Z Kyoshu Saiyan, came out in 1990, and it is based around the Saiyan Saga, of course, and it is another card-based RPG game, just like the others, but instead it follows Dragon Ball Z. Pretty cool, like I said, the box art to these things are amazing, I love them so much. Next one here is Dragon Ball Z 2 Gekishin Frieza. Again, this continues where the other game left off, and this one is for the Frieza Saga, another RPG uh, card-based game. Take a look at that cover right there. Sticker on the back is kind of covering the graphics, but what can you expect with graphics from 1991? This is from 1991, this game. So, love it. Again, box art on point. Next one, Dragon Ball Z 3, Resent Jinzo Negan, and um, this takes place, of course, after Geki Shen Frieza, Dragon Ball Z 3, Resent Jinzo Negan, which means a violent battle of artificial humans. There you go right there. Released in 1992, which was the year I was born. So again, another card-based um, RPG game that follows the last game that continues. 
from the last game is Dragon Ball Z Gaiden Seijin Zetsumetsu Keikaku. Keikaku. I hope I said that right, but it's pretty much the plan to eradicate the Saiyans. But in um, just plain video game form for the Famicom, it was released in 1993. And again, it's an RPG game, as you can see right here. Of course, later they released this for the Playdia and made an animation for it. So, fun fact on that. And now for the final game for the Famicom, which I wouldn't say it's a standalone game, it's like more of a game with an attachment to it, the Joint ROM the Tuck attachment, where pretty much you would swipe the cards on there to like, um, I believe, summon players. For this one, you attach it to the Famicom, right? And then you it comes with cards inside and you swipe them onto the attachment piece and it'll summon players and you can use those players and fight with them. So pretty much this is a fighting card game, you know, because you, you use literal cards for this. So you can check it out on the back. The official name to this is actually Dragon Ball Z Gekito Tenkaichi Budokai, but a lot of people call it the Tak because that's what it says on the front. <laughs> but it's it's pretty awesome this thing, and it was released in 1992 by the way. And check this out, guys. This is a Dragon Ball game called Dragon Power. So remember, Shenron no Nazu, right? Okay, so in America it was released as Dragon Power in 1987. Here, it follows Goku, right? That is altered. Now, um, he doesn't look like your usual Goku. And it also, instead of Bulma, the name is Nora. So it's uh, more or less the same game, just some changes and meant for an American audience. Here's the back. So yeah, there's your fun fact. Shenron no Nazo was actually released in America as Dragon Power with instead of Goku on the front and all that, some karate guy. Here's this um, Shenron knockoff right here. Alright guys, now moving on to Super Famicom, which is the Super Nintendo in the US. So the first game we got here is from 1992. It's called Dragon Ball Z Super Saiyan Densetsu. So pretty much this is a remake of the Famicom games from the Goku Den series. These two right here, right? from starting with the Saiyan Saga, then it moves on to Frieza Saga, so this one's a remake of those two games. It's pretty much those two games into one, right here. Pretty cool. Again, you know what it is, RPG card based. Next game for the Super Famicom is Dragon Ball Super Goku Den Totsugeki Hen. So pretty much this one is like an RPG action game that follows Goku from the beginning of Dragon Ball all the way to the King Piccolo saga and it was released in 1995 so check that out love love the box art to these games honestly right next game is from 1995 called Dragon Ball Z Super Goku Den Kakusei Hen so pretty much uh, this is the sequel to the last game I showed you and it follows um, Goku from the Piccolo Jr. Saga all the way to the final battle with Frieza. So it's an RPG action-based game as well. Check it out. Here's some little um, pictures of the game. Front of the box. Love it, that artwork so much. Alright, so now moving on to the Super Butoden series, which I grew up with. I used to play these games so much. Super Butoden number one. So this is a fighting game. And the story mode starts with the Piccolo Jr. Saga all the way to Cell Games. And it has eight playable characters and I had a lot of fun playing it even though the mechanics are super slow and everything. They move slow as hell. The sprites are not the best but the way the game looks improves over time. It was released in 1993 and it's a, it's a nostalgic game for me. It's, it's good. I had a lot of fun playing it. Next up we got the second one. We got... Super, Super Butoden number 2 from 1993 and it's pretty clear that um, the graphics are even better than the last and once again I grew up with this series a lot and the story mode covers the Cell games as well as Bojack and Broly it's pretty cool let me know if you guys played it as well and the last and final game in the Super Putoden series is Super Putoden 3. And the graphics are a lot better, definitely, than the previous ones in this one. 
but I feel like I don't know. I think Super Butoden 2 was definitely the best in the series. Number 3 wasn't as good in my opinion. But it was still a fun time and I still played it when I was young. It came out in 1994. And oh, what is the story? The story mode, I believe, is just the Boo Saga. I think it just, yeah, I think it's only the Boo Saga. So there you go. And. Here's the back. Let me know if y'all played this game too. So now the final game for the Super Famicom is Hyper Dimension, which now those graphics are even better than the last ones I was talking about. Hyper Dimension was a really, really good game. This one came out in 1996. It's probably the best game in the Super Famicom Dragon Ball games, you know? And um, definitely a fan favorite. No, no doubt about it. And the story mode spans from Frieza Saga to the Booth Saga. Good ass game. Alright, now we're moving on to the Playdia games, which was a console only release in Japan. Um, the reason why it's so glossy is because mine is sealed. This first game here is, of course, the first part of the plan to eradicate the Saiyans. Japanese title is Dragon Ball Z. Uh, Gaiden, Shin Seijin, Zetsumetsu, Keikaku, Kikyohen. So, um, it's a long ass name. But it pretty much is uh, the plan to eradicate the Saiyans, um, part one. <laughs> so, um, this one a, is a very unique game because it's pretty much um, the plan to eradicate the Saiyans OVA with, like, a game. Like, you know, pretty much when playing this game, you choose between different options to go to the next sequence. It was like an interactive OVA. Literally, that's what it was. So this was released in 1994. Sorry guys, my camera battery died, but okay, next one. This is the second part to the plans to eradicate the Saiyans. Um, OVA slash game, Japanese title, um, Dragon Ball Z, Gaiden Shin, Seijin, Zetsumetsu, Keikaku, Uchuhen. Oof, man, long, 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 long. But um, this one came out in 1994. And again, for the Playdia. I think it's a neat idea for back in the day of an interactive kind of OVA game, you know? It's very different. And these are very rare, by the way. These are worth um, a pretty penny these days. All right, now moving on to the PlayStation games. First PlayStation game from Dragon Ball is... Dragon Ball Z The Legend, okay? So this one came out in 1996 and it spans, I believe, um, from the Saiyan Saga all the way to, yes, to Boo. So there's another fighting game. Graphics are much better than all the other games, you know, like the Famicom ones and all that because it's PlayStation. Here's some artwork in the back here. I love that picture of Vegeta right there, that infamous photo of Vegeta with the Patara earrings. We got like that cool um, image of um, Parunga. I always thought it was so cool. But this is the greatest hits version, of course, as you can see with the border. Kind of really want the just original, like not greatest hits. It looks better. I don't like how it has a border on it. So there's that. So the Japanese uh, version of this game is coming in the mail. So for now, I only have the English release, but I have purchased the Japanese version just it hasn't gone here yet ultimate battle 22 so this game sucks I'm sorry I don't like this game um, the Japanese version came out in 96 the American re-released 2003 okay so yeah it's not a good game the mechanics really suck and they're super slow when they fight and it just is boring honestly I thought this game was boring I mean I played it as a kid but it's a very slow paced game um, it has characters, for, as many characters though, 22 characters to be exact. They have Kid Goku in here actually. They have from the beginning of Dragon Ball Z to the end. So the character selection is pretty decent, but the game itself is not very good. So who has played this game? I'm sure a lot of you guys have since they did end up releasing it in the US under this um, artwork. I like the Japanese artwork better though. Okay, I'm gonna have to sit a little bit lower because my foot really fell asleep. Okay, so the next game we got here 
I'm sure a lot of y'all have played this game. A lot of y'all for the PlayStation. This is a Japanese version of Final Bout. Um, released in 97, along with this one. This one was released in 97, but this one is the Japanese, legit Japanese version. But this is greatest hits, so it's not the original. You know what I mean? I, I don't know if I'm confusing you guys, but this is the Dragon Ball GT Final Bout English version, but the original release. You know what I mean? Okay, because I also have the 2003 re-release of it. Sorry, 2004 re-release -re of the game, okay? So this is a rare version. There was only 10,000 copies of these released. Only 10,000 copies of guys. Because nobody knew what GT was back in 97. Like, it's so insane. I just realized I have the really rare co copy, guys. I just realized that. That's, in that's so crazy. Look in the back, guys. English. Completely English. So, that's how you know. This is the rare, ten only 10,000 of these produced. So anyways, back to the game itself. I'll take these all in my hand. This is the later um, wide release version with a different cover and everything, so you know this one's not worth really shit. This game wasn't very good, but it sticks out in a lot of our minds because this is the game for a lot of us that introduced us to GT in the first place. The graphics were very, very blocky and they would move so slow. The mechanics were so, so slow when it came to this game. It wasn't good, but it was cool to see the GT characters in action and a baby. Super baby uh, Uzaru was a playable character. Or, you know, he was a boss. He was the boss. I did beat him. I remember I beat the whole thing at one time. I was dying. I was like, yes. The game has a nostalgic factor for me, but it's not good. <laughs> Alright, so next game. The only game released for the Mega Drive system. Dragon Ball Z Buyu Retsuden. Okay? So, this one has very similar graphics to the Butoden series, but it's not part of the Butoden series. I think the game follows a lot of what if stories. It's a pretty cool one, and also, like I said, the only Mega Drive game out there. And it was released in 1994. It's pretty unique for that reason. And I believe this one's actually worth. Um, a decent amount of money nowadays. Definitely this final bout that I told you that I realized it was one of the- a copy out of the 10,000. I remember seeing it at the store once and it was like, oh, like over a hundred bucks when I was little. Crazy. <laughs> Alright, next game is for the Sega Saturn called Dragon Ball Z Shin Butoden. So this is actually- oh, this was released in 1995. So this is actually part of the Butoden series of games. But this one is kind of lame. It reuses a lot of things from Ultimate Battle 22 and like sprites in the opening sequence and all that and it just makes it not unique for that reason. I like the cover of the game. It looks like Goku, I said this in my last video game video, but it looks like Goku's like at a rave. He's like at a party or something. <laughs> but take a look at the back. Check that out. No, the game kind of is a rehash of other of Ultimate Battle 22, which is not a good game, so this can't be very good, right? Next game is Dragon Ball Z and Dainaru Son Goku Densetsu. This game is not your typical, like, Dragon Ball game because it's pretty much centers around Gohan telling Goten the battles of Goku, like, the different battles he's had before his passing because he's, like, dead in this game. It's interesting in that sense as you can tell like it has goku when he's little up to adult because it has fights from dragon ball up until z so this game is from 94 the pc engine all right so here's another big game that i got this one is a handheld game as you can see right here and it is called dragon ball z super barcode wars this is from 1992 and it pretty much follows the Android Saga. Check it out. It's a pretty cool system right here. It's heavy too, because as you can see, it has some little playable character pieces and the board game and the cards and it's a whole big set right here. And there's also um, one that came out a year before this one called LSI Bar Barcode Wars. And that one followed the Namek Saga, but it was smaller. It wasn't as big as this one. And you know what, I just learned that. I didn't even know about it until recently. Here's another handheld game. 
This one is called Dragon Ball Z Kaioaku Frieza Shurai. So pretty much it's a um, handheld game that follows um, the battle between Goku and Frieza in his first form. There's so many of these little um, handheld games out there. They're worth um, a lot of money nowadays. They're hard to find. Crazy, but I only have one of these handheld games because they're just that hard to find, honestly. Alright, so this game, Dragon Ball Z Manga Cassetto, came out in 1995. And it's a little game that you play with a stylus. And it's set in the Majin Buu Saga. It's a black and white game, as you can see right here. And there's also a sequel to this game that I have ordered and it's on its way to get here. Here's the first one. Right now, let's move on to the Game Boy games. Not Game Boy Color, but regular Game Boy. First one from 1994 is called Goku Hishoden. Obviously this takes place in the Saiyan Saga, as you can tell right here. It's an RPG game. Pretty cool. Check that out. There we go. Next up, we got its sequel, which is called Dragon Ball Z Goku Gekitoden. Released in 1995, another RPG game, of course, continues from the last game I just showed you. Of course, it takes place uh, on the Frieza Saga. Cool. I wish they translated this in English. That would have been nice. And now, here's another game that I have that's a bootleg. I got it at Chinatown years ago. I don't really know what it's a bootleg of, like what game exactly, because I forgot. But it's 100% a bootleg, um, no doubt about it. But it's unique because I have never seen another one like this. If you guys can tell me what it says on the front, if anybody knows what it says, let me know. Very interesting Chinatown. I remember I got it for 10 bucks or something, super cheap. But definitely interesting um, piece of my video game collection, that's for sure. All right, let's move on to the Game Boy Advance games. So let's start with Legacy of Goku. I adored this game, even though Mechanics were kind of slow and definitely the worst one in the Legacy of Goku series. Still good. I enjoyed it for what it was when I was a kid. A really fun RPG. So Legacy of Goku is from 2002. I had a lot of fun playing this game back in the day. Legacy of Goku and I'm sure a lot of you guys have played it as well. So next up, moving on. Legacy of Goku 2. Check it out. Love that game as well. Um, this follows like Android Cell Saga. It's from 2003. Good game as well. Had hours of fun playing it. And after that comes Boost Fury in the Legacy of Goku uh, franchise. I don't have it boxed. I have it loose and cartridge only. So I'm not going to show it because I really want to get it with the box. That's my goal to get the boxes. So. I do have the game, it's a really good game, the best out of the series, you know, definitely, and it was pretty challenging. But yeah, I have it, just not the box. I also have Dragon Ball Advance Adventure, which is a very rare game nowadays. I was trying to look for it online, on eBay, and it's like a hundred bucks with the box, it's so crazy. So I have the cartridge and not the box, I'm like, damn it, so I'm not going to be showing it here, but I need that box, because it's so, ugh, but it's so much for the box, it's ridiculous. So um, now we're going to move on to, again, Super Sonic Warriors. Have the cartridge, don't have the box. Looked it up online, rare, again, to find the box. What's up with all these newer games? That you would think the more vintage ones are rare, right? But these newer ones with the box is so hard to find. Alright, so the next one I have the box of is Dragon Ball Z Taiketsu. It's from 2003, which was not a very good game either. <laughs> really bad sprites, they were ugly, very, very ugly. Again, the mechanics were really bad for this game. Not good, but I did have fun playing it when I was a kid. Next up, we got... Dragon Ball Z collectible card game. Yeah, I had this, I played it, did not know how to play it correctly, so I would just press random things when I was a kid. This is from 2002. Co the collectible card game. Uh, who actually knew how to play this and played it well? Because I did not. One Game Boy Color game I forgot to show here is Dragon Ball Z Legendary Super Warriors. Another game that I didn't really know how to play when I was little, but I would just like to press buttons. Legendary Super Warriors is from 2002. 
It's a card-based RPG game, and the sprites were really, really weird looking. But yeah, the only US release Game Boy Color game. I always thought the sprites were so, so strange, but <laughs> check that out. Who had this as a kid as well, and who used to play it. Next game for the Game Boy Advanced from 2005 is Dragon Ball GT Transformation, which was a pretty good game, to be honest with you. I liked it, I enjoyed it, I played the shit out of this game, it reminded me of Legacy of Goku games, but no, it was GT, which is why I really, really enjoyed it. And I could play as Pan, and you know I love Pan. Again, RPG fighting game. It was very good, I liked it. Now, we also have Game Boy Advance Video Dragon Ball GT Volume 1. They've only ever had one, they never released a Volume 2. And in this um, cartridge, it had two episodes, A Grand Problem and Pan's Gambit. This was released in 2004, and um, it was pretty much a cartridge that you would put in your Game Boy Advance or SP or whatever and watch two episodes. I bought it, and I had it, <laughs> you know, and I would watch the episodes on my Game Boy. It was kind of stupid, it was a little gimmicky thing, but hey, I got it. <laughs> Alright, so the next game we got here is for the Wonderswan Color, which is a Japanese-only handheld console by Bandai. And the game is just Dragon Ball. That's the title. It's literally called Dragon Ball. It came out in 2003. And it is a remake of Dragon Ball 3 Goku Den. It's like the same thing, just with improved graphics and sound, of course. It's cool if you enjoyed that game, and you can see clearly back here um, that the graphics are super improved than, of course, the original game but yeah this one's also pretty rare from what i remember it's a little bit hard to find nowadays but um i got them i got it from ebay a while ago all right so now that i showed you those let's move on to ps2 games i know a lot of you guys have a connection to the playstation 2 games because so did i i had a lot of fun playing those games for hours and hours and hours when i was a kid so let's move on um first one i want to show you is of course budokai one i remember when this game was released i freaked out i bought it immediately i played it until i don't know it was late as night and my mom would yell at me to go to sleep came out 2002 and looking at the graphics now of course they're not that great anymore but back then i thought they were pretty cool like the budokai one next up we got budokai two which was released um, in 2003 and this one has improved graphics and it has like shade like cell kind of shading to it i didn't like it because they made story mode like a board game and it was so stupid i'm like why did they do that why did they make it like a board game based freaking story mode it's stupid so game was fun though for what it was i enjoyed it so now budokai 3 I had it when I was a kid, but I lost it somehow, so I have to rebuy that one. But I... did I order that one? No, I'm in the process of trying to get that one again. Had it when I was a kid, don't know where it went, I really don't. But that's okay, let's move on then. This one from 2005, much, much better graphics. Way, way, way improved. I love the uh, Tenkaichi series. Um, these games were great, really, really great. Check it out. Some of my favorite Dragon Ball games of all time. Love it. Then we got, okay, Budokai Tenkaichi 2. Again, I don't know where it went. I had it as a kid, played it all the time. But I have reordered it, so it's going to come here soon. Um, but look what I got. Budokai Tenkaichi 3. And that's my favorite game of all time. My favorite Dragon Ball game ever. Dragon Ball Z, Budokai Tenkaichi 3, that game is a classic, it's amazing, and it's worth a lot of money nowadays on eBay. Like, what, 60 bucks with um, the case and manual and all that? Good ass game, love this game, um, has an amazing catalog of characters to play with, over 150 characters, and you just can have hours and hours of fun playing this game, it has great uh, replayability, it's, it's such a such a great game. Check it out, and this one came with an extra, like, Best Fights DVD. So, my favorite game of all time of Dragon Ball is this one. What year did this Budokai Tenkaichi 3 come out? 2007. 
Okay, so next up we got Dragon Ball Z Sagas, which is horrible. This game sucks. It's trash. It's an RPG game. Came out 2005, but it's the most trashiest RPG game ever. Very glitchy. You can barely move around. Um, it's hard to fight. It's bad, and you get stuck like almost right away. I don't know anybody who who beat this game. This game is so it's almost impossible to beat because it's so stupid and hard to play. Very glitchy. Not a good game, do not like it, uh, but it's part of the collection, so there you go. Next up we have Dragon Ball Z Infinite World from 2008. To be honest, I haven't played this game much, so I don't remember too much about it, but I heard it was very good and fans do like this game. So it's a good addition to the Dragon Ball Z PlayStation 2 games. Next we got Super Dragon Ball Z. It was released in 2006. Yeah, it's like a more like an arcade kind of feel sort of game. It has cell shading in the graphics. And I never really played this game much either, so let me know if it was good or not. So those are all the PS2 games I have. I know this video is long as hell, but hopefully you're sticking around. <laughs> Let's move on. I'll do PS3 now. Let's do PS3. Alright, now we got Burst Limit. I believe the first Dragon Ball game for PS3, released in 2008. They never made a second one. I know people that wanted a second one, but they never made it. It only went up to the Cell Saga, so I guess they were thinking about making more, but just never happened. Next up we got Dragon Ball Z Raging Blast, which came out in 2009. And the Raging Blast games were actually pretty good. Raging Blast 2, I do not have plan on getting that one of course and that one I believe is better than even the first one. It reminds me a little bit of the Tenkaichi series. Yeah I remember playing the second one actually and it was good. Okay moving on we got the disappointment of a game Ultimate Tenkaichi came out in 2011 and it had the very first custom character feature and it was a letdown because it was not very customizable at all and just overall wasn't the best game. It was it fell flat. It wasn't that good, in my opinion. I played it for a little bit, got bored of it. Dragon Ball Battle of Z. I don't know if it's good or bad. It came out in 2014 here. Yeah, so um, let me know if it was good or not. I never played it. I'm going to be honest with you, I never did. But maybe I should. Should I? Let me know. Next one here that I have is the Dragon Ball Z Budokai HD Collection. Of course, it has Budokai 1 and 3 remastered in HD. I don't know why they never did 2. I found that weird. I, I found it weird that they skipped 2. This went 1 and 3. Because maybe because they knew uh, the second one people didn't like as much, but still. Still, you know? It's kind of stupid. <laughs> they should do this again, but with the Tenkaichi series, because that's, um, for me, I liked it better than Budokai series. It was released in 2012, this one. 2012? Wow. I thought it was actually um, newer than 2012. Okay, then we got Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Xenoverse. Great game. Of course, we all know that. They finally did the Create Your Own Saiyan correctly. And it has a unique story to it. And with the Time Patrol and all of that. Good game. Um, came out 2015, of course. Alright, so I'm gonna do the PS4 games real quick. We got Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 right here. Came out 2016, this game. Of course, another good game. I enjoyed it. Was it as good as the first one? Not sure, but it was still very good. Dragon Ball Fighters reminds you of like Marvel vs. Capcom kind of game, and it's a lot of fun. To play. The whole fight is kind of all over the place, but that's what I like because it reminds me of Marvel vs. Capcom and I really like those games. So Dragon Ball Fighters came out in 2018. Amazing graphics, by the way. Amazing ass graphics. Very, very nice. And of course, I got Kakarot pre-ordered, so I'm gonna get that one. Now, we're almost done now, guys. We're almost done. Okay, so let's move on to the only Kinect game that ever came out for Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball Z for Connect. That's a bad game. That's a bad game. Apparently it was very hard to use. You look like an idiot playing it and you can't even play it right. It's like 
hard to freaking move with the connect. It just doesn't work. I don't know. That's what I heard. 2012. 2012 it came out. Not a good game though. It was a fail. It was a fail. We Dragon Ball Revenge of King Piccolo. I got that. It's pretty cool that they decided to make a Wii game for Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball doesn't get as much love, so um, I heard it was fun to play, you know, that it was a good game. Uh, came out in 2009, and Dragon Ball deserves a little bit more love than it gets, I think. Now we're going to move on to the DS games. Let's do the DS games. We're almost done here now, guys. We're almost done. We got the first one. Dragon Ball Z Haku Kanaru Densetsu from 2007. This one is a card-based RPG game for the DS. It takes place from the beginning of the Saiyan Saga to the Cell Saga. And I'm not sure if it's any good because I honestly never really played it at all. Barely. Um, yeah, it came out in 2007. Was it any good, guys? If you're, The thing is, I was never a fan of those card RPG games that much. So that's why I never wanted to really play it that much but is it good next up we got dragon ball z supersonic warriors 2 i remember liking this game it came out in 2005 the sequel to ob obviously supersonic warriors we got dragon ball z attack of the saiyans that was a fun rpg game it came out in 2009 it's from the piccolo jr saga to the saiyan saga and i remember thinking it was a good game i enjoyed playing this game um, for some time, you know, for me when I got older I would get bored with games really easy because other things came up, life, but um, I did like it. Dragon Ball Origins 1 and 2 don't have them, I need to get my hands on them one of these days very soon. I heard those were pretty good as well. Um, okay, so the 3DS games, let's move on to 3DS and we're like about to be finished. 3DS. Alright, so we got Extreme Butoden. Another fighting game that kind of reminds me a little bit of Fighters, kind of, because it's like more than one player on the screen at once and has over 100 characters. It, so it was a fun game. It came out in 2015. That cover just says it all, all the characters. <laughs> the amount of characters that are in it. Okay, well then we got Dragon Ball Fusions. I loved this game. Why? Because it was a fun little RPG kind of fighting game. And you can create so many different fusions. They're really cute sprites and also Pan is a playable character and a kind of kind of main character in it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this game quite a lot. It came out in 2016. I used to play it at work. I used to sneak and play it. Next we got Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Heroes number two. I don't have one but I, I got number two and I went to Japan, came out in 2014, and of course it's like a handheld heroes game, only released in Japan. And there's also a sequel to this one called Ultimate Mission X, which I don't have. You get those eventually. And now the last games here that I have to show you guys, finally, we got PSP games. First one, Shin Budokai, came out in 2006. My cousin really liked playing the PSP games. Kind of reminds me of just like the Budokai games, but like in the smaller scale, you know what I mean? But I heard they were fun anyway. Dragon Ball Z Tenkaichi Tag Team. Again, my cousin had these. It, it's like the Tenkaichi games, you know, for the PS2, except kind of scaled down for the PSP. This one came out in 2010. There's also um, Shin Budokai Another Road. I don't have that one yet. I will get it very soon. I think I have the one ordered as well. There you go. So those are the two PSP games I have. Um, I thought that was it. No, there's more. There's more games that I have. Just two more left. We got Super Dragon Ball Heroes World Mission for Nintendo Switch. I don't have a Nintendo Switch, so I'm not able to play this. But yet yeah, I found a really good deal on this game, like 24 bucks on Black Friday. So I just decided to buy it because I needed it for my collection anyway. First Dragon Ball Heroes game that ever has come out in the US, which is pretty awesome. Let me know um, if you guys have played it. Let me know if it's any good. Came out this year, 2019. I think it's pretty cool that they decided to make one for the, the states, um, being released in the states. And the final game here is some uh, bootleg Spanish game, it looks like. So it's called the Official PC Games Collection, and it has the Batoden games in here from the um, NES and SNES and some of those um, card-based RPG games for um, Famicom, sorry, I meant Super Famicom, 
and Famicom get confused. They're both the same like system, just they are named differently in Japanese. Yes, so it's a compilation of different games, uh, four games. So yeah, some Butoden games. Um, oh, okay, I see now. So it's but some Butodens and Hyper Dimensions in here looks like in one of the card-based RPG games. Well, it's some kind of bootleg game, but there that is. So that's it. That is my entire video game, Dragon Ball video game collection. There is some, uh, sorry my feet really hurt from being in this position, but there's a couple I don't have. Some are super rare to find, like the first Dragon Ball game. There's this other game that's like with a telephone, like it's, you use a telephone for this game. Like, it, that one's rare. I've, I don't see that one. There's another one called Anime Designer, Dragon Ball Z Anime Designer for the um, Apple Pippin. Rare as hell, don't have that one. So there's some vintage ones that are super rare. And for some reason, the Dragon Ball Advance Adventure is like really rare nowadays too, like a hundred bucks for that game. If anybody would like to donate the box to me, like I'd be very happy to take it off your hands because all I need is a box. But anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. It was very, very long. Probably one of the longest videos I've ever made, but I hope you guys have still games that I have and heard me talk about each one a little bit. I'm sorry, my card keeps getting full because I've taken too much footage, but like I was saying, so let me know what's your favorite game, your favorite Dragon Ball game of all time, what's your least favorite Dragon Ball game of all time, and once again, I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it took a long time. Until my next one, peace out, Goshen Force. Remember to keep breaking limits every single day, and maybe in the future, I'll do another updated video game collection video but if i do an updated one i will not cover i will not go over every single game again i'll probably just start off i'll be like hey guys i did a video a couple years ago whatever like here i'm gonna link it and like let's start from here like but anyways hope you enjoyed this and until my next one peace out hey it's pan from dragon ball gt and you're watching my good friend ssj goshen 4 yeah